Refresh your memory of Money Heist before Season 5 with a quick recap. One of the biggest shows to come out of Netflix is Money Heist. It is the biggest foreign language show and has broken records of its popularity with every season. What makes it so good is the constant twists and turns that it serves the audience with the characters that are easy to fall in love with. There is also the excitement of the cliffhangers that every season ends with, making the viewers come back for more in the next round. It all started with the first season that premiered back in 2017 on Netflix. If your memories have become a bit hazy about it, here's a quick recap. Money Heist Season 1 Recap Every great job needs a competent team, and to rob the Royal Mint of Spain, the professor brings together a group of people, each best at what they do. The professor is the puppeteer of this game. His father was a robber, and it was his last wish that led the bespectacled genius to chart out this plan. The next main character is Tokyo, a volatile robber who is devoted to the professor. She forms a romantic connection with Ryo, a young hacker. Berlin is the professor's right-hand man who has known him for a long time. He is the one who assumes leadership inside the Mint. He is somewhat of a psychopath and suffers from a degenerative disease, which means he is going to die in the next couple of months. Moscow is the one in charge of digging the tunnel that will be the escape route of the team, and he is accompanied by his hot-headed son, Denver, who has a killer laugh. Nairobi is the master counterfeiter, and Oslo and Helsinki are the muscle of the team. The Plan After spending five months in seclusion, the professor and his team are prepared with a plan that is foolproofed for every contingency. The simple rules that the professor asked to be followed were no real names, no romantic connections. The latter is already broken by Tokyo and Rio, and this has adverse impacts on the plan. Speaking of which, it is to make it look like a robbery gone wrong and trap themselves inside the mint, along with a bunch of hostages. The cops will think they have nowhere to go, and in the meantime, they will bide their time and print 2.4 billion euros. The hostages. The most important hostage inside the mint is Alison Parker, the daughter of the UK's ambassador, which makes it crucial for the cops to handle the matter delicately. Next, there is Arturo, the director of the Mint, and the character who quickly becomes the focus of the disdain of the robbers, as well as the audience. He had an affair with his secretary, Monica, who is now pregnant. Then there is a girl named Ariadna, who seduces Berlin, hoping that this would keep her out of harm's way. Mercedes, the teacher who was supervising the group of students on their visit to the Mint, also wants to find a way out of the Mint. The Cops to negotiate with the professor, Inspector Raquel Murillo is brought in. She divorced her husband, also a police officer, because he was abusive, but not everyone in the department buys her story which is why she is not as welcome there. Her friend and colleague Angel, who is also in love with her, supports her and becomes suspicious of a new man who has only recently entered her life. His suspicions are well placed because this man is the professor. For the season, mistakes are made in Rio, Tokyo, and Berlin's identity comes to light. The professor himself narrowly escapes the cops many times and gets closer to Raquel, who is none the wiser. Denver falls in love with Monica, whom he was ordered to kill by Berlin after she tried to smuggle a phone to Arturo. A divide develops within the team and a couple of hostages take advantage of the situation and succeed in making an escape, injuring Oslo in the process. Raquel and Angel are turned against each other, one believing that the other is a traitor, when in reality, Angel has been bugged. Angel succeeds in getting a fingerprint of the professor, who presents himself as Salva to Raquel. But before he can forward the findings to her, Angel meets with an accident. The professor discovers that he had left a message with Raquel's mother and briefly considers killing her, before realizing that she suffers from short-term memory loss. After the escape of the hostages, the robbers give the remaining of them a choice. Either collaborate and get money in return or choose freedom. Those who go for the latter are imprisoned in the basement, the rest get to work. On the outside, Raquel figures out the location of the place where the team had spent five months before the robbery. The ending. After a bumpy ride of 60 hours, the professor and his team succeed in taking care of almost all the hurdles. 
Professor comes very close to killing Raquel's mother, but decides against it in the nick of time. To his good luck, the old lady forgets about it within seconds, which leads him to the realization that she has a memory loss problem and has already forgotten about the call and its contents. With that taken care of, he becomes more relaxed. Meanwhile, things seem to settle down at the bank as well. After the daring escape of some of the hostages, the team recovers not just from the loss of a good part of their leverage, but also from the loss of Oslo. In their attempt to escape, one of the hostages hits him with a pipe. Further, he loses a lot of blood which renders him brain dead. Tokyo and Nairobi want to get him out so that he can get some treatment and might even be saved, while Berlin suggests sticking to the plan. After a heated moment, Helsinki interrupts and says that Oslo would rather die than be sent to jail. Moving forward with the plan, they put into motion another scheme laid out by the professor. To prevent another uprising, they decide to give two choices to the remaining hostages get your freedom or become an accomplice and get one million dollars from the loot. They had expected people to go with the money, but they get mixed reactions. This is another win for them because now, they have separated wheat from the chaff. The ones who chose money now have a solid reason to assist the robbers and see this thing to the end. The people who chose their freedom are the ones who would most likely stir another attempt at an escape. So they are sent to the basement. It goes as planned until someone makes a mistake. Berlin has taken a liking to Oriadna, who had seduced him in the hopes of keeping herself alive. For a while, it seems like a dumb move because we know that the robbers have been told not to kill anyone. Until now. When she chooses her freedom, which is also motivated by the fact that she won't have to see Berlin anymore, he advises her against it. He doesn't say anything directly, but he does hint that it could get dangerous for her if she didn't go for the money. Picking up on it, she goes for it, and when the other hostages are making their choice, she gestures to Mercedes to do the same. As a result, the teacher stops a couple of other people from crossing the line to freedom. But the most important thing is that Arturo picks up on what's happening and decides to stay too. Now the problem for the robbers is that they are ready to let their guard down. They are convinced that they have turned the hostages in their favor and need not worry about any attacks from them. But Arturo and Mercedes will not sit still. Helsinki should have killed Arturo when he had the chance. While the foundation of one problem is set, the professor bears witness to a huge blunder. In a moment of clarity, Raquel realizes that the robbers would have set base somewhere to plan out the whole thing. Since all of them know how to use guns, they must have had some practice. Angel had already pinpointed a pharmacy from where Berlin would get his medication, which makes their task easier to locate the position of the base camp. As Raquel discovers the whole plan in the attic, Professor panics in the car. 